started at verse 48. I'm going to start uh, now at verses 1. I'm going to read 1 through 5. I strongly, strongly encourage you to read that entire chapter again. That's one of the most powerful chapters in Scripture. I mean, if you have a down depression, read Isaiah 40, and it will lift up the spirit right away. Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says your God. Speak your comfortable uh, to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for God. For our God, every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Look at somebody and say, God's glory. God's glory. That's what I'm going to talk about today. God's glory. You may be seated. They talk about it. It's our purpose. God created us that we might glorify Him. And at our best, we are glorifying God. At our best, we are glorifying God. But you need to understand something. If you don't glorify God, God will glorify himself. With that which it is. Yes. We should glorify God. Um, this passage is written during the time of the Babylonian period ending and the beginning of the Persian period. The writer, even though it did not exist, when research is time and kind of bad idea, so it's believed that one of his students probably wrote it and put it in his name, as some of the authors would do back then. Some of the people called this second idea. But it's, it's a writing that the writer gives us a picture of God at his best. It, it's really a, a chapter about God. It starts with God and it ends with God. You know, one of the reasons why a church is not what it should be, too many people are focused on other stuff yeah. and other people other than God. Maybe if we preach less about folk and more about God, we would be better off. That we need to understand it's really about Him. It starts with Him. It ends in Him. But somebody said to Paul, said, in Him do we live, move, and have our being. If you ever depressed, if you're ever going through a down period in your life, Focus on the Lord. It's hard to be depressed focusing on God. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too dreadful for Him? There's nothing that we experience in our lives that God cannot handle. Do I have a witness here? So I start off with this forgiveness of the Father. Forgiveness of the Father. The Bible in the Old Testament and New Testament, as I said earlier, is a book about God and what He has done, what God is doing, and what He is about to do. Yes, some people say, well, we have the Big Bang here. Hmm. We came from the Big Bang. Well, maybe you came from the Big Bang, but you missed it. 
if you understand that as a purpose to who we are. No, I'm not here by no accident. I'm not here because of some explosion. I'm here because in the beginning, God stepped out on nothing hmm. and created something and said, let there be. Yeah, yeah. And he spoke the world into existence. This awesome God uh, can uh, do what he does. And it's only after I focus on him that I can start to talk about man. How you gonna talk about man without talking about who made man who he is? Y'all look at me like y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, all I'm trying to say is if you want to get your life together, you got to set the priorities straight. And at the top of anybody's life ought to be God. When you wake up in the morning, who you ought to talk to, talk about, talk about the Lord. Talk to the Lord. See if he will give you some directions and some directions. The writer says, uh, I was dealing with God and these Israelites, and God told me, uh, I want you to preach a sermon, but I don't want you to preach any kind of sermon. I want you to preach a sermon of comfort. Preach a sermon of comfort. That's the word right there. And a lot of times uh, we love, and second of all, you love the We'll keep them across that route. We want to point out people's sins and shortcomings. That when they leave church, they depressed. They came depressed because they were already struggling with their problems, and now you made it worse. Hmm. But he said, "No, I don't just preach a word. I want you to preach a word of comfort." Look at somebody, somebody say a word of comfort. Now if you don't get anything else to say. You already get that word, and you are make a point in your life. So when you talk to folks, try to talk to them with a word of comfort. Don't just talk about what's wrong with them. Give them a word of comfort. You don't have to wait for people to have somebody dead in their family to give them a word of comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to wait for people to get fired from that job to give them a word of comfort. You are the purpose of your life when you wake up in the morning. Whoever I meet, I want to comfort their spirit. I want to comfort their heart. I want to lead them better than I found them. He said, yeah, give them a word of comfort. Preacher, yeah, preach about God. And when you preach about God, preach to the people. But when you preach to them, give them a word of comfort. Oh, they had a whole lot that they could talk about. Uh, could have talked about some things they had done. Remember, the Babylonians were the ones who took them into captivity. The Babylonians were the ones who took them off of their high horse. You remember, the Assyrians came from the northern kingdom, but the Babylonians were the ones that got the southern kingdom. They, they thought they were all left in the bag of chips, and God had to bring them a few buttonholes lower. They have been suffering in this foreign land. They've had to endure all of this negative treatment, being in captivity. Uh, one writer said, how can we sing Zion songs in a strange land? They were a depressed people. They were going to march them. They, they had been demoted. They, they are God's people, but they thought that God had forgotten all about them. Do I have a witness here? All I'm going to say is that from time to our lives, when we have to come to the grip, we have to treat God as well as we should have treated God. Yeah. And then you say, well, uh, Reverend, you know, they say they deserve to be turned away from God, they had idol God. But think about this, not only did the idol worshippers have to be captured, but even the remnant was also captured. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had That when God pays them, he doesn't just get the bad ones, but the good ones had to go too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I hear the police complaining that y'all are talking about police brutality. And, and not, we all are not good. We all don't kill folks. We all are going to have a bad attitude. But you know what? Sometimes the sin of a few can pass on the whole division. Yeah. And then the thing about it is that any time, uh, I wish I had a mention here, Martin says, whenever there's injustice somewhere, there's injustice everywhere. That, that you, you can't, you say you don't have anything to do with it, but you're not doing as much as you possibly could to stop some of it. You say that you didn't cause it, but maybe you should have spoke out more than you did. That the fact of the matter is we're all in the same boat. That if one man is sinful, all of us have a job to do. The only time saints can stop doing work is when all people are saved. And there are no citizens, there are no people who don't know God. Then we can retire and get 
give up. But as long as there's a God, as long as there's some people who are messing up, that somebody needs to put the two together, lead them out of darkness into the marvelous light. Do I have a witness here? We've got to learn how to give God the glory. So he says, part of uh, him, he says, cry. Uh, cry in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Let the folk know that we've got a God who can fix what's wrong with you. We got a God who can make the, the crooked way straight. We got a God who can create a highway in the desert. We got a God that will fill in the valleys and will level out the mountains and the hills. Uh, we got a God who can 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 make the rough places plain. The glory of the Lord is going to be revealed, and we all should see it together. Yeah, and what the writer is trying to get us to see is that there at no point in our lives should we be hopeless as long as God is still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If God is alive, we have hope. If God is alive, we have a chance. Because if God is alive, there is nothing that messed up that God can't fix up. Yeah. Oh, that's a sermon right there. Right? And you know, sometimes we want to give up on folk. And we want to say, well, they got reprobate minds. And we want to send folk to hell. Sometimes you talk about yourself and don't even know it. You better stop trying to give up on people. The very one you give up on is the one God has selected to be the soul. Yeah. You can't on Peter that he was perfect. And God said, no, he's the one I'm on that priest that did sermon on Pentecost. That you can't up on Aaron when he had that golden calf. I said, no, I'm going to make him the first priest, the priest that's going to be on. You really give up on folk. And God said, no, I don't give up on people. I change folk. I transition people. I change them and make them better than they were. We want to be people of hope. We ought to realize that God is able no matter Oh, yeah. 
been preaching that job, he's preaching 50 years. Oh. Uh. It's not ideal preaching a sermon. I went to Christmas funeral uh, week, uh, they didn't have any program. They had some uh, Anthony to uh, preach. He said, man, you want to preach? I said, no, oh, man, you, you don't even have to. He said, well, you know, man, uh, you know, go to book. He said, man, I think you want to have a sermon. Man, I don't get it twisted. Huh. I got a sermon. Yeah. I'm not telling you to preach that I don't have a sermon. You wake up at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. I ain't preaching a sermon. Yeah. It's not an idea of a sermon, it's an idea of uh, they have you on the preach, so you preach. Yeah, yeah. You gotta understand, God don't have to use you all the time to get His will done. I wish I had a real You gotta understand, God can use somebody else. Yeah, yeah. But because I've been preaching 50 years, don't mean I don't have a sermon. I need to know what is the sermon. Right, right, right. <laughs>
Look at how our God is and how bold our God is. Hmm. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. That, uh, he said, if you want to have somebody to compare God to you, uh, look at who he is. Is there anybody can do what God does? Hmm. He's all right there. He, he, he's strong enough. His arms shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him. His work is before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lamb with his arm and carry him in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young who have fed the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven uh, with the span and comprehended the, the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and hills on the valleys. Uh, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord uh, being his counselor? Is there, there anybody can teach God anything? Is there, there anybody had to help God out when he stepped out and spoke the world in existence? Is there anybody who had to help him uh, hang the stars in the sky? Did he ask somebody to hold the ladder when he put the moon up there? Did he call for any assistance when he made the sun blaze the way the sun is blazing? You, you see him calling for a repair man to change the batteries out in the sun. Yeah. Who, who do you think this God is? Anybody help God in the ocean? Started to be ocean, and he separated the land from the water. Huh. Who, who knows anything about this God that can have a mountain hot at the base and, and have ice on the peak of the mountain? Oh, what an awesome God we serve. We can't even think about uh, comparing him to anybody else, but I see it when he says, uh, You ever thought about people can take wood and then? take uh, gold and melt the gold and fashion the gold around the wood and then claim that that's their God and they want to worship him and they put him up on a pedestal and they bow down to him and say, yes, he is our God. I heard the writer, he said, you compare that God to our God. Is there any comparison uh, to the God of Babylon? Uh, can you compare our God uh, to the God of Persia? Uh, is there any God that you want to talk about? Uh, Some want to talk about Buddha. Uh, can Buddha compare with my God? Uh, is there any God that you've read about in history uh, that you can compare to the God Yahweh, uh, Elohim, uh, the only true uh, and the living God. Uh, I heard the writer say, uh, Behold uh, your God. Uh, and I told you before, uh, if you behold your God, uh, you'll see how powerful he is uh, and how mighty he is. Uh, I don't care how frail you are. Uh, you need to know that you have an awesome God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to close here. Uh, Y'all been writing kind. Uh, I'm going to close talking about fast, uh, a fasting uh, yes, uh, for the future. Uh, yes, uh, you need to fast to the Father uh, so you prepare for the future. Uh, has thou not known? Uh, has thou not heard? Uh, yes, uh, that has been revealed to you. Uh, about this awesome God. Uh, do you know who he is? Uh, if you know him, uh, you ought to get on the mountaintop uh, and tell somebody uh, who <coughs> God is. Uh, yeah, in other yeah, words, yeah, yeah. Uh, he said he's not a God. Uh, you ought to keep to yourself. Uh, since we have such an awesome God, uh, you ought to tell somebody about him. Uh, if he carried you through something, uh, you need to let somebody know that if it were not for the Lord uh, on my side, uh, where would I be? Uh, yeah, yeah. What would I do? Uh, you ought to tell somebody uh, if the Lord uh, that woke me up this morning uh, and started me on my way. Uh, you ought to tell somebody uh, that he's worthy uh, to be praised yeah, yeah. as I Has thou not heard that the everlasting God 
the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He fainted not, neither is he weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases their strength. Have you not heard? Do you not know that the God we serve, he's able to carry you through. He's able to deliver you from Corona. He's able to get you through the storm. He's able to take you through the valley and enable you to climb the mountain. Is there anybody here that needs to know about my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Have you not heard? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, he's able to carry you through. He's given power to the faith and the people.